Welcome to the channel. If you're new, my name is Sean and I do a lot of stuff with McLarens. Maintenance, upgrades, that kind of thing. And this is going to be one of those maintenance videos. So this is my 12C that I got behind me. And today I'm gonna to actually do two videos, but they're gonna be separate videos. So if you see this one, there's gonna be a little bit of crossover to the other one. And this one, we're going to change the clutch fluid. It's supposed to be done every 20,000 miles. I'm actually a little bit overdue for it. Uh, so I'm gonna do that today, but I'm also going to do the transmission fluid, uh, which I'm actually early for. I'm just gonna do them both at the same time. So it is recommended if you're doing this on the normal scheduled maintenance, 20,000 and 40,000, that you would uh, do both of these at the same time for one of those. Uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and do it. I'm at 32,000 miles right now. Uh, but I have been racing and that kind of thing, so I'm just going to go ahead and do both. But this one, we're going to be focusing on the clutch fluid. So here's what we've got. I have got 7 liters of Pentacin FFL4. This is the fluid that is recommended by McLaren and the dealership uses for doing these. Uh, I have 7 liters. I shouldn't need 7 liters, but I've got it just in case. We'll see how much I actually end up using. You also have the filter. This must be replaced when you do the fluid exchange. So keep that in mind on here. You also need this O-ring that goes on a cap that holds this in place. While this is not a sponsored video, Indigo Auto Group, uh, which is also possibly known to some as McLaren Houston, uh, is where I got this filter and the transmission filter from. Uh, they didn't sponsor this video, but they did give me a pretty good deal on it. So uh, talk to them about getting these filters. I am not aware of any type of aftermarket replacement or anything like that. I'm pretty sure it's proprietary to this engine, transmission, you know, all that kind of stuff, uh, unlike some of the things. But uh, these are the items that we need to do this. And I'm going to take you through step by step everything required to change the clutch fluid. And then there'll be another one on the transmission fluid and there'll be some overlap in steps and that kind of thing. But let's get started. Step one is going to be remove the diffuser. We've got two screws here, two screws here, and a bunch of them under there. So we're gonna take all of those out, get this down, disconnect power, the whole harness here from the uh, reverse light and uh, rain light. And then uh, take this whole thing out and maybe we can get access to the side to actually do the uh, fill. We may have to take the wheel off. Uh, you're kind of supposed to. We're going to see if we can get around that and use a pump instead of a funnel and get to that without having to take the wheel off. These are all four millimeter hex. Uh, you may have noticed I used a screwdriver on two other ones. Those are Phillips. Those were changed because they were missing at some point and uh, the thread that I could get and everything readily available was Phillips. So that's why mine were different on those. Uh, I do recommend using a T-handle when you can because these small ones are kind of a pain. But if you want to do it fast, you can also use an Ugga Chugga. I have always taken these off, but I did it before I actually tried pulling on anything. So as it turns out, you don't have to take these off. What you do have to take off are the 10 millimeter bolts that are tucked up on the sides by the uh, fender liners. Now we'll do the same thing on the other side 
and they should come loose. Now the key to success here without taking the wheel off is the ratcheting 10 millimeter wrench. I forgot there's actually four across the bottom. There's two more up here again with the ratcheting 10 millimeter. And since I also forgot, right up here on each side, there's another one. Now once you take all these screws out, this is gonna come down. So it might help to have a second person uh, or definitely taking out the ones from the wheels first and maybe leaving these as the last ones so you can get a hand on it because it will come loose as soon as you take those out. But you have the wiring harness. Uh, for everything down here that is tied in and there's a clip that supports it If you can pry that clip off of the bracket That will give you a little bit More slack on here so you can play with it and then there's a plug up here as well uh, That way you can kind of get this out of the way or from this point You can get your hands on it to disconnect the plug for here and take the whole thing out I've actually removed the plastic piece that's here so you can see this better, but to get this unplugged right down there where my finger is, if you just take a screwdriver, push down this way, push down this way, and then pull out. I've already loosened it, but that will uh, come right out so you can get the rest of this out. You might notice this extra wire here. You won't have that. I've added a reverse camera and that's where this uh, goes into. Uh, the other one that goes actually to the camera itself, and this is for the reverse light. So you won't have this, you don't have to worry about that one. Uh, this is the only one you've got to worry about. This one up here, uh, I slid off. That one does not connect to anything on the other side. I think that's for the factory reverse camera uh, that didn't come until Iris 2. Uh, this is a 2012, so it has Iris 1. But from this point, we can now remove this whole thing. Next up, we've got this plate. 10 millimeter bolts all the way around. There is a box that's mounted right here. So you gotta be aware of that. Now I couldn't exactly figure out how this plug came off as I've never had it off before, but as you can tell, it is broken, which means somebody else could not figure out how to get it off at some point either and it broke but this is a weather pack and it does stay in there uh, quite tightly that is for tpms so it's not critical to it running uh, but uh, try not to break that because you know broken plug things so here's our point of reference we can finally get into the nitty gritty uh, we're looking from the back towards the front and uh, we're going to swing up under here and this right here is uh, our fill point. This is our filter for the clutch and both of our drain plugs. These are eight millimeter, these are 10 millimeter, and you'll notice the Z bar is kind of in the way. So you have to work around those, get those loose, get that out. You're probably just gonna tip it this way uh, to get all that out. Now, it's also a good time to check the bushings on your Z bar. Mine are fine. If yours aren't, replace them, but it's a good time to check these out while you're in here. So we are gonna get into the drain phase so we can move on. Now, ideally, the motor would be hot, clutch would be hot, that kind of thing. Uh, when you have hot fluids, they're gonna flow a little bit better. You'll get a better drain off of those. So if you drive it a little bit beforehand before you get to this, great idea. 
um, it may actually take you a while to get all this apart. So that's another consideration. Uh, but you can also just run it in place for a few minutes uh, to either keep it warm or get it warm so you have a better flow. If you have been running the car, you probably got some faults for some things you disconnected here. Uh, so you want to do that really before you start disconnecting things, uh, not after the fact. Also make sure you have protective eyewear while you're doing this. Now let this drain for quite some time, uh, well over five minutes to the point where it's just a little bit of dripping from each one of those. And I've put these in uh, by hand um, so it'll stop dripping and I can get the drain out of the way so I can show this to you. Uh, we're going to torque these down and I cannot stress enough how much you should not over torque these because it will strip very easily. This is all aluminum and uh, then you have a way bigger problem than you bargained for. So these are 37 foot-pounds or 50 newton meters of torque. That's all they take. Now we're gonna pull the filter out and uh, make sure that everything is drained from there and swap the filter. Now for the filter, and I know what you're thinking, why don't you just remove the Z-bar to get these two bolts out? That's a huge pain. Uh, right now we have the entire load of the back of the car loaded up on the Z-bar. Uh, so we could take these out on both sides. We could take the ends off down there and this whole thing would be loose and then we could do that. Uh, it's a lot of extra work. It's kind of unnecessary, big old pain. Uh, so we're just going to start with uh, taking out the two that we can easily get to. And I should mention there is not very much torque on these at all. Uh, it is seven foot-pounds. I think it's about 10 newton meters. You obviously do not want to lose your bolts in your drain. So make sure your drain has a screen over it, kind of like mine does. And for the ones in the back, we're simply going to use a wrench. I'd like to take a moment to thank our sponsor today, Nobody. Uh, nobody has been sponsoring this video for over hundreds of years, providing nothing to everyone. Uh, if you would like to support this channel, uh, you can do so in the links below. There is a Patreon uh, that goes to uh, my company where I do some other videos as well. Uh, so you can hit that link below and uh, support the channel that way. Uh, now on to what I have discovered. Uh, last you saw, I was taking the bolts out to get the filter out, and I had mentioned the Z-bar and how I didn't want to take it out. The bolts are too long. You have to take it out. Now, here's where it gets tricky. I'm on a four-post lift, and uh, to get this out, you have to take these bolts out, these bolts out, two 10 liters, no big deal. 
it'll come loose. You can see I've already loosened them. Uh, but this whole thing will come right out so you can have complete access. You can torque them correctly, all that good stuff. But the wheels cannot be touching. That's the tricky part. Uh, four post lift. So uh, you kind of have to jack it up from the jack points, which I have one jack that I can slide under here like this. Uh, so I use wood and hockey pucks to, uh, to get this to stay up there. And then uh, scissor jack, slide it right under there, get up off the ground. After you take tension off the wheels, this will just move fine. Uh, you don't have to take the ends off like I originally thought. Uh, this will just come loose uh, so you can get it out of the way. Uh, so if you have a two post lift, you're totally fine. You still don't have to remove the wheels or the liners. Um, they're still on, but you cannot have tension on the wheels to get this loose. So now we're actually going to get this completely off, take this filter out, swap it out, retorque it. And one quick tip in all of this, you're taking all these bolts out. If you can't remember where they go, it's not a bad idea to bag and tag them. Uh, I've got a pretty good idea. I'm putting all the ones that go together in one group. But uh, if you can't remember, you don't think you'll remember, you just want to make sure, bag them and tag them. All right, now let's take a moment to look at what we've pulled out here. You saw I just kind of put a screwdriver onto this, popped right out, it's just pressure fit in there. The plate is what actually holds it on down there. Now, this is the old filter, as you might guess, and it's quite dark. Uh, it's been doing some filtering. So uh, all that fluid that you saw come out didn't look that bad, it didn't look that particularly old. Uh, I don't know the last time it was changed in the last 16,000 miles that I've had it. I know it has not been changed. So maybe it was done uh, just before I got it. Uh, not exactly sure, but you're supposed to change it every 20,000 miles. 16,000 in didn't look bad, but this filter does not look great. That being said, this is also why you change the filter. It's possible this is the original filter to the car 32,000 miles in. The fluid may have been changed, but the filter may not have been. Uh, I don't know, or at the very least, the filter is definitely filtering. So here's the new one. It looks all nice and clean. That'll be the guy that's going back in. So we can get this one in place, and then I'll show you where that fancy O-ring went. And here we go. Here's the plate that we unbolted from the bottom of the filter. Uh, it just sits against here. That's why it's press fit and this bolt in. This is the old O-ring. This is the new one. You should not reuse this. It can leak from here, so just replace it. It's a few bucks. Yes, I know it costs way more than it should. You can probably find one this size, whatever, somewhere universal. But I just got a few bucks extra spent to know it's the right one. It'll fit in here. It won't leak. So this one will go on there. I should use a pick tool to get this one out. Real easy to do. So I'll get the O-ring on here, get the plate bolted back up, and then we can start the fill procedure. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that this surface is completely clean, which it is. We're gonna take our plate, which if you notice, there's a little notch there and a notch there. And those go in the front or rear. So it won't matter which way it's facing as long as those our front and rear. You can push that in by hand. Make sure you go in as straight as possible so that O-ring will sit correctly. That will hold in place. And then we want to put our bolts back in. Do not over tighten these bolts. If you do, it will leak. 
making it tighter doesn't make it not leak better. Remember, there's no ring on the other side of that. So this is going to be 10 Newton meters, seven foot pounds or 88 inch pounds. Now you have no reason to over tighten it. So here's where it gets tough. These two, we can push this back a little bit, but we still have some issues getting to it. So I've got a quarter inch that's a short socket with a swivel head onto an adapter for a drill because I don't happen to have an adapter to go from three eighths to quarter and I don't have a quarter uh, torque wrench. And since I don't have a quarter torque wrench, we can use this, which goes to our three eighths socket that is a quarter inch on this end, which this will slide into, which our torque wrench will go on. So here is the contraption to make this work for seven foot pounds because I don't have the tools on hand for this normal stuff and I don't wanna go get any. So be creative and come up with your own thing like that. Now with this torque down, we can actually put the Z-bar back on. And if you notice, these things have been flying off. They're spacers, they go on top. The other two stuck there, but we can now take this, bolt it up back in place, and then get to the fill. Now the shim on the back side uh, wasn't perfectly straight, so it bound me up. So make sure that that is lined up perfectly, slides right in, and you can go all the way up with it. And I may have also noticed that I tighten these by hand. And the reason is when you take them loose, you'll notice they are not very tight. I don't know the exact torque spec. However, I'm going to torque them to the same uh, seven foot pounds because that's kind of what it felt like on here. Uh, they do not need much torque at all. And there's our fill. I've put the wrench on there so it's a little bit easier to see exactly where it is. Uh, but we're just gonna back that out and then we're going to pump it in. Now, if you don't have a pump and you wanna just uh, do a gravity fill through a funnel and a hose, uh, you're probably gonna have to take the wheel off and the wheel liner out and then flim flam all the way through to make that work. But I'm gonna pump that in because that's gonna be easier and we don't have to take everything else off. And here's the setup. We got the pump, there's the out, there's the in, which will end up in one of these containers uh, multiple times. And it goes up, loops through a hole up there, comes down, uh, we want to go up and then down as we're pumping this. And uh, as fluid starts to come out, we know we're full. So you just keep pumping fluid in until it starts to dribble out. Then we move on to the next step, which is putting the plug in running the engine uh, for a little bit, getting it heated up, getting it circulated, taking the plug out, topping it off again, running it again, taking it back out, topping it off, and then we're good. But for now, we're gonna pump some fluid. Allegedly, three liters should fill this up. Well, it would seem that I am done pumping for now. Uh, I don't know who mentioned three liters, Wherever I saw that, I think it was actually a McLaren manual. They lied. They lied a lot. Uh, this is actually number seven. This is the last one that I had, I believe. So I've got about maybe a third of this left to top everything off. So now I'm gonna put the plug back in. We don't need to go to full torque, uh, just get it snug and then we're going to fire it up, 
run it at 2,000 RPM for two minutes, get all the fluid circulated, top it off, double check that level. Now some notable things. At no point should you ever take it out of neutral. Always leave it neutral. Leave the parking brake on, all that good stuff. Additionally, make sure you open a garage door if it's closed. If you're in an enclosed area with the engine running, you die of carbon monoxide poisoning, get really sick, all that kind of good stuff. So now that I've cleared all of the really dumb things you didn't think of out of the way, we're gonna start this thing, run it at 2000 RPM for two minutes, and then immediately pull the plug and uh, try to top it off again. If we don't have to add any more, then we're good to go. And if we do add some, then we'll do the same process again, and then top it off one more time. I'm not gonna show this whole thing because it'll be boring. So here's what happened. I ran it for two minutes at 2000 RPM. I checked the level again and it was low. So I finished pumping out what I had of the last bottle and I ran out. Uh, the level never came back up. So another bottle is needed, which I can have tomorrow for $47. Uh, the other ones I paid $27, so that's fun and awesome. But I will have another liter, which means you probably need eight liters, not seven. I'll have that tomorrow, and then I can finish the whole thing. It is another day. I've got another liter of clutch fluid. Uh, so now, because the engine is now cold, uh, again, you have to run it. 2000 RPM for two minutes to get it circulated, pop the plug out, make sure we're topped off. Then we can put it back together. So I'm gonna get it warmed back up, check that level, and we should be good. I don't see it could possibly take more than this extra liter. Now this did actually take the entire last liter. And if I gave it more time to warm up, uh, it probably would have taken a little bit less. Uh, I don't know that you can actually necessarily overfill uh, it goes to that fill point and it's intended to have some extra I feel like for the clutch uh, that's something you would want to have extra cool so having a little bit over is probably going to be fine uh, if that is the case but now we've got the plug back in and we've got to torque it seven foot pounds 88 inch pounds 10 newton meters it does not need to be very tight at all really does not take much uh, make sure you're careful with that and uh, now with that plug back in we get to put all of this back together and then go for a test drive now is a great time to do some cleaning under here if you want to uh, mine's not too bad there's a few spots that are a little bit grimy but they're just gonna stay that way uh, the order that this goes back together does not matter um, I'm going to go ahead and do this piece first, just because, uh, then we'll get the diffuser on. When you're getting this panel on, absolutely make sure you remember to plug in TPMS so that'll work. Um, you probably noticed there was an error when you were running it earlier, and that was because this was disconnected. So make sure to reconnect it so you don't have that error again. The impact that I'm using is not extremely high torque. They don't need to be extremely high torque. That just does make it a lot faster going in and out. It is a quarter inch impact, so not a big deal. Uh, but make sure that these are definitely nice and snug. And now we can move on to the more difficult part, which is the diffuser. It helps if you have a second person. If you don't, you'll see how you can do it with one person. Now I'm gonna use something a little bit different than I did when I was taking everything out. The bit kept coming out of the holder wasn't working out so great and you can do this instead if you don't have one. So this is a four millimeter, I just took a wrench, cut the angle part off, and I put this in a drill. Uh, you can do a very low clutch setting 
Uh, you can strip these out. So if you're going to use a power tool like a drill, make sure that the clutch setting is set very low. Uh, just makes things go faster. If not, if you don't feel comfortable with that, do it by hand. But you can put one of these in the drill and uh, again, make sure it's a low torque setting. It'll make things go much faster, a little bit easier when you're trying to hold it up by yourself. Don't forget to plug in your plug for everything down here. Then we can lift it in place. Uh, might be easy to get uh, some of these in, one on each side, and now kind of hold this in place so you can get to the bottom, get another one in place, and then put the rest of them in. So putting the diffuser back on by yourself, what I found is the easiest way to do this is uh, set it in here, the lip that this actually bolts into, set this up here, you do not want it to fall, obviously, but set it up on top of there, um, go under, lift it up, get a few in, then come back here uh, and just work your way this way with them uh, and they should get lined up pretty well anyway. Um, if you didn't take out your fender liners because you still have the wheels on, remember that you're going to be trying to get on the inside here. Uh, that goes for right here, uh, going into this spot on both sides, um, at the front of the wheel and at the back of the wheel. This has got to go um, on the inside edge of it, except for this, it'll go right up in the middle. Uh, but the liner is the outside part, so it goes behind it, goes through the clips, make sure all your clips are straight so they will go in. But uh, as long as you can observe that and kind of massage it a little bit, it should go right in. So that's what we're gonna do. Don't forget to put in all of the 10 millimeters, the two that are up here, the one that's back here, the two at the front of the wheels and the same on the other side. Now, if you don't want to reach up in there and fool with it, and maybe you can't get the clips lined up with the screws and that kind of thing, what you can do is just take the wheel off, uh, lift it up, pop the wheel off. You can get to those really easily. You don't have to take the whole liner out through this whole process if that's what you did, but take the wheel off, uh, put them back in nice and easy put the wheels back on if you do that tighten your uh, wheel studs there to 95 foot-pounds now before you go patting yourself on the back for a job well done you've still got to do a test drive go through all the gears uh, make sure everything shifts fine nothing acts weird it shouldn't but double check it maybe uh, make sure you don't have any leaks anywhere just in case so I am going to go test drive mine now, call that a wrap, 
And that is the entire process. If you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Comment below if you have any questions or any comments on any of this. Nobody sponsors these videos, so if you'd like to help contribute to this, you can hit the Patreon link in the description below. And I hope this was helpful. Thanks for watching.